So right now you could be making $200 a picture. Well, not a picture, but an item. Four or five pictures of one item for $200. And if you don't believe me, let's go over to Fiverr real quick and check it out. Amazon, Google, eBay, a lot of people are looking for images on a white background. And with something like this, it's very easy to do. So let me show you the process. This cube was 60 bucks and you can start making $100 per image. Recently, I did a photo shoot for a client and this were 17 hats that she wanted pictures isolated on white. Very simple, boom, boom, boom. I did this in my studio and then that triggered the idea. Can I do this? in a low budget studio and it's absolutely yes you can. I started photography with this cube. This is what I started with uh, the stock photography. A cube like this you could use natural light. Right now I'm outdoors so this is very easy to set up. You just pop the cube. If you have natural light you could use it. If you have steady lights indoors you can use it and any kind of lighting you could always use to light up through the cube and the light is nice and diffused. You can see it on me. It, it looks nice. It, it's flattering light. Uh, it's a great setup for $60. So what do you need besides a cube? You're gonna need a, a surface to work on. So I have a, a table. It's a little $20 table. All the items that I'm gonna be using, and I'll put links in that in the description. They're affiliate links, so if you find anything here that you might wanna buy, uh, use those links and then get a small commission. It's a really easy way to help support any of your favorite uh, creators. But let me get back to the items. It's a little table. And I have that PVC background that I've showed in other videos as well. Uh, and a stand. So all together, the, the table's 20 bucks, this is 60, uh, and the background was another 20, 25. Okay, so how do you shoot? This is very easy. When you're shooting something on a white background, there's two main things you gotta worry about, and that is either your, your metering mode, you're either in spot metering, or remember to just overexpose one or two stops that's gonna isolate the object you're trying to shoot. And if your object uh, is white, then this might be a little bit trickier, but I'll show you the process here in a second. A lot of this might have to happen in Lightroom or in Photoshop. All right, so this is the table I was talking about. So as you, it just folds up, super easy. It's, okay, it's not the cleanest, it used to be silver and I painted it and now the paint is coming off. But it's, it's pretty sturdy. Okay, now it's pretty sturdy. This is the stand that I use for the PVC background. Uh, and it fits about there. And I can adjust the height of the white background. Okay, so here is the, the roll, the PVC background. I don't want the shiny part. And I'm gonna use my favorite thing, the Gorilla Tape to put it together. Okay, so here's my favorite lens, the, 70, uh, the 24 to 70. And as you can see, it's almost completely isolated. All I have to do is just uh, overexpose a couple stops. Not too much to get it washed out, but enough that it's completely isolated. So let me take a picture and show you what that looks like. The lens is completely isolated right on camera. It leaves almost no work uh, in post. And when I say any product, I mean literally, anything that you have, anything that you want to photo photograph by using a setup like this. It's completely isolated on a white background. My knife, that's, uh, it's a little dirty, but you get the idea. And then, ooh, let's, let's do a car. The BMW. Adjust the lens here. How about an Aston Martin? When you're dealing with a, a product that's on white, if I set it this way, it's gonna be too white because the light is coming from this angle. Um, so that's just gonna wash out in the background. So by using the shadow side, it's gonna look much better, it's gonna have texture, and it's gonna be much easier to work with in post. Now Lightroom makes it very easy to isolate a, a subject uh, especially the new Lightroom, the new version, you can select the subject or select the background and just in increase the exposure. It'll be completely on a white background. Mm -hmm. 
So for product shoots, my favorite lenses, my favorite go-to is the uh, 24 to 70 2.8. This is for the Canon R5 that I'm using right now. And then also the 70 to 200. This little thing is a beast. It's super sharp. It has a great range and it doesn't distort items as much as you would think. Now seriously, if you go to Fiverr, you'll get a good idea what people are charging. I used to go to Craigslist and get a price of what people were charging uh, in, in a certain area. But Fiverr, people mail you the products. So it doesn't matter where you are. You could charge higher prices even if you're in a not so busy area because you're gonna get products from all over the world. That's why I like Fiverr.com. Uh, this is not sponsored. I think it's a great website. It's a great place to get things done. Um, and it really gives you an idea what some people are, are charging. Some of these prices start at $5 per item uh, and go all the way to over $300. And that's one to five pictures of each item, usually on white, uh, front, side, back. So anybody could do this. When you're trying to price yourself, when you're trying to figure out what to charge, remember to value yourself as a photographer, the gear you're using, but also your skill level. A lot of people forget about their skill level. <laughs> and this is something you gotta keep in mind because you wanna be honest about how much you can charge, how much you can make, and you wanna keep the client happy. Usually, you get what you pay for, and you just gotta keep that in mind. Uh, if you wanna repeat business, you don't have to be the cheapest out there. You have to be somewhere in the middle and be comfortable uh, that you know what you're doing when a client asks for, for a shoot. This background is something I used when I started in, in stock photography to isolate things. And to me, it's awesome. It was a great start. It was a great way to, to get started and learn how to isolate, how to cut and do the touch-ups in Photoshop or Lightroom. And uh, it's paid for itself many times over. Uh, so if you don't want to deal with clients, if you don't want to do anything like that on Fiverr, use it for stock photography, use it for, for any product. I mean, literally anything you could put in here, even a dog. Bambi, where are you? If you want to change things a little bit, I also bought these backgrounds. Hold on. So I bought these backgrounds and you probably see them all over social media. They're, they're great, they're different textures. Like this is a, a concrete, there's wood, there's all kinds of different textures that you could use to take pictures and bring things up to another level. Now these backgrounds you cannot use for stock photography because that is a stock image that somebody put on that. They bought the images and now they're selling the, the backgrounds. So you're not technically supposed to be able to use those pictures. Uh, as you know as part of your stock photography but for product shoots to sell something in Amazon to sell something in eBay that is more than acceptable there was one more thing I wanted to uh, talk about and that is the importance of real life pictures uh, if you go to my merch shop here on YouTube and, and you see all the products that I offer you know with my logo or designs that I've had made you see that every single image looks the same. The colors change, and what, but everything is the same. That's because these are not pictures. These are computer renderings. Uh, and that's where the industry is going. A lot of big companies are using computer rendered images instead of hiring a photographer. And to me, in a way, that's misleading. I've ordered some t-shirts that look great on the screen, and then when you get them, you're like, what? Uh, and so that to me is a little bit misleading. I really want to thank this client for using me as a photographer, for supporting me as a local business. Uh, so I want to support her biz local business. So I'm going to put a link down below to all of, of her stuff, her store. So you can see a little bit more about what she's selling, what she's about, and also uh, some of the pictures I took. <laughs> and then if you want to learn a little bit more about action shots or just more lifestyle images, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about that. This is the basic, isolated on white, everybody needs it. I'd love to make another video explaining all the details, how to do setups and props, and maybe even just some light painting, like this image of the car. So to me, this is fun, I really enjoy it. And if it's something that you wanna learn about, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make that video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.